My music is really good, but I don't have a brand. Can I still make it? This is one question or comment that I get more than any. I have over 800 students at our school, Cosmic Academy. They ask me this question. When I speak at Harvard, when I speak at NYU, the students there ask me this question. What happens if you're good at the music and not with the brand? We'll discuss that today and go through examples. And I think my answer is going to surprise you. First, if you don't know, I'm Justin. I run Cosmic Academy. We're an arts development school, and we've been around now for over 12 years. We've worked with over 800 incredible producers, and they get amazing results. They sign to the biggest labels, like Defected, Spinin, Tool Room, Anjuna, Monster Cat. They play the biggest festivals, the biggest shows, Ultra, EDC, Tomorrowland. And yes, a lot of my students specifically come to Cosmic because we teach both sides, the music and the brand. So we have a lot of experience in these areas. So as a producer or an artist, if you're really good with the music, must you also do the branding to be successful? So that all depends. What does success mean to you? If you're making music just for yourself and you honestly don't really care about what other people are gonna say or other people hearing it, then yeah, you don't really need to worry about the branding side. But the moment you tell yourself, I want other people to hear this, then by definition, marketing and branding comes into the equation. The second you decide that you want people to hear yourself, you're literally defining what marketing seeks out to do. If we actually break down what is the purpose of marketing, it is to quite literally put a product to the market. When I was preparing for this video and doing some research, I actually went on Google and I tried to look up who is the best musical artist with no branding. Like I actually tried to find artists that had no marketing. And then I realized how ironic this was because if someone legitimately had no marketing or branding and they've never wanted to put themselves out there, I wouldn't be able to find them and I couldn't. So then the next question becomes, do you personally have to do the marketing and branding or can you have someone else do it on your behalf like a team? You know, some people say, well, I'll have the label do it or I'll get a management team. Well, Years ago, the labels would sign you and sure, they'd put a team around you or managers would sign you and they would start giving you direction. That sounds really great because then you don't have to think about it. But today, that doesn't really happen. And it doesn't happen for two reasons. The first reason that a label or a manager won't put a team around you is right now, they're only signing people that already have a brand. Yes, the labels are very open about this in 2024. They no longer have the resources, because this comes down to resources, to just invest time and money and teams into every artist. Being honest, uh, record labels, they just don't make that much money anymore. So they want to sign people that already have a sense of their own branding. And then the second reason this doesn't happen anymore, you know, why a label or someone doesn't just do the marketing on your behalf, and this is the most important reason, it's because the audience wants to feel connected to the authentic you. I'll say that again. The audience wants to feel connected to the authentic you. Back when I was growing up, there were all these bands and pop stars, and a lot of them had manufactured brands. You know, like a marketing team at a label would come together and they would like fabricate an image for an artist. And that's because of the distance the artist had from the audience. Going back way to the beginning, back to the start of recorded music, the audience was very far from the artist. At the beginning of recorded music, it was just radio. You couldn't even see that artist. So quite literally, they could make up any brand for that artist. You couldn't even see them. They could tell you any story about that person. But as time went on and you got a little bit closer to the audience, you know, with the advent of music on television, now you're getting a little bit closer and they can see more of you. And then there's music videos in the 80s and the 90s and they can learn even more about you. And fast forward to today, that distance doesn't exist because now the audience is in your pocket all day. And it's very hard to like fabricate or manufacture some gimmicky brand today. The audience today wants authenticity. A recent study was published on the current generation of people that are looking for music. For a very long time, the primary place that people discovered new music was on radio and television. But today, the primary place where people discover new music is on social media. Oh, I heard this song on TikTok. I heard this song on Instagram. So if you're not putting yourself out there, no one's going to hear you. 
And again, if that's not your goal, that's okay. But if you're willing to accept this concept that in order for you to get your music heard, you need to market, then the next question you typically have is how and what. The how do I do it is actually kind of obvious, but the what is where people find quite challenging. The how you do it is putting yourself out there via content across social media. And I'm sure you've seen a million videos that just say make content. But the real hard question is not the how, but the what. What should you put out there is the hard question. Now, this is a question that I spend hours with my students working on. We sit down individually and one-on-ones to work on this. It's very hard. So I'm gonna try to do that with you today over a YouTube video, but I just wanna say in preface, this is something where I sit down with someone, go through their life and try to extract that brand from them. But I'll still give you some great tools today. First of all, realize that branding is about connection. People want to feel connected to you. All of branding is like this. You buy Nikes because you're connected to their brand. And their brand, at least when I was growing up, was all about basketball. I got the Jordans, I got the Nikes because I wanted to be like Mike. And I was connected to that, I was connected to the basketball. Now, if you hated basketball, you might have been into Adidas, which was more about soccer or you know football, as they call it outside of America. If you love extreme sports, you might be more connected to the brand of Red Bull. Are there plenty of other soft drinks, energy drinks out there? Yeah, but Red Bull does really well connecting with you on extreme sports. It's the same thing with the iPhone. You buy an iPhone because you feel connected to the brand that they're putting out there. And your love for your favorite artist is the same thing. If you really think about your favorite artist, like close your eyes and say, okay, let me think about my favorite artist. You don't love them just because of this one or two songs. You love them because you feel connected to them. You know things about them. You like things about them. And because of those things, not just the music, now you feel connected to them. Dead Mouse, he wears a helmet. That's not his brand. His brand is that he loves to go get coffee, Tim Hortons, he loves his cat, he loves video games, he loves 3D modeling, like that's who he is. And he puts out content about those things. And if you like those things, if you're connected to them, and you like his music, you're gonna be a fan. Charlie Puth is really, really good at music, but he also puts himself out there. He puts out content about him sampling random noises and turning them into songs. He shows you his nerdy knowledge of music theory and how he can just like find the key of a song from his mind. And that's who he is and he puts that out there. Ed Sheeran, he loves ketchup and doing his loop sampling and, and he likes hip hop and, and he does covers of the songs that he grew up on. Why do I know those things? He puts it out there. Now, you might look at an artist and say, well, this artist doesn't do any branding. But if you ask a fan of that artist, they might say, well, no, 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 they have a brand and it's about them being from New York and they, they're really big on mental health and they love Star Wars. And you'd be like, how do you know that? It's because they're connected to them and the content, the things that they put out resonate. And once you realize that the artist brand is yourself, things will start clicking. You don't just concoct some image or market some manufactured idea. You consistently put out the things that you love, your passions. And there's enough people on the internet and on these platforms that there's people that'll connect with those things and your music. You just need to decide what are the things that I'm going to put out there about myself. And yes, it's very intimidating and, and people overthink this all the time. But like I said before, if we're just sitting in our bedroom and we do zero marketing, and we don't put ourselves out there, then how can we share the music? How would we connect with people so that they can appreciate our work? Now, this is something you need to think about. The folks that are geniuses, but they do no marketing, they're not public artists. They, a lot of times, just become songwriters or producers for other people. And that's a career as well. That's a great career as well. I do have some students who do that. But the moment you want others to hear your stuff and check you out and enjoy what you've made, you have to do some branding. You know, the real answer of who is the best producer that doesn't do marketing. I mean, it's someone like Max Martin. He has like more number one hits than anyone not named the Beatles, but he makes them for other people. Britney Spears, Katy Perry, Ariana Grande. He is a genius, but he didn't want it to be about him and him marketing himself. And look, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be Max Martin, but if you want to be your own artist and you want people to hear your stuff from you, then by definition, you're saying you want to do marketing. So now that we have to do it, Think about the things that you love, that you like, that you're passionate about, and put out content around those things. Let people connect with you. 
Now, in terms of marketing your music specifically and getting more and more plays and listens, I have an entire video breaking that down. I'll put that one up next. I'll see you in there.